I don't, I don't feel like I have the tools to write intellectually. I'm talking about how I studied. I was never, uh, I was never really a structural uh, composer. I've taken a few com composition classes and and uh, talked to some composers about this element. But uh, I was going to say that that during the blank score page, <laughs> uh, trying to get started thing, I always had this thing in the back of my mind that there were there were guys who I knew were incredible composers and my fantasy was they didn't need any inspiration. They could sit down to this blank paper and because they knew how to be a structural composer they could just start and write. And I don't know if that's true or not. I mean I've, I've uh, I did mention it to Jerry Goldsmith once and he laughed but uh, I, I think there are there are there are degrees of this this intellectual no, of actual knowledge about about composing that vary between a lot of composers. I tend to look for something that that sounds right to me, and it doesn't go too much deeper than that. How is it to settle? On? style how, how hard is it to settle on a style for a film I think it I think it depends well in my case if I find something that really works uh, I'm I'm content to have that be the be the uh, template and uh, it's it's not uh, it's not always obvious the thing I, I tell kids sometimes, I tell students, if I can identify in, a, in the story a geography, I'm home, I always feel like I'm home free because I know now, I know from a, a cultural or a folkloric sense what area of music I'm going to be involved in. Now that doesn't mean I go write a Roomba score for a Cuban picture necessarily. But there is, a, there is something that makes me feel like I know where I am if there is a geographic uh, uh, parameter to it. The one thing I, I could mention, the one example for me is on Golden Pond. Now you say, well, so what is geographic about that score? But when I first sat down, I thought, what does New England sound like? And to me, it sounds like... Um, uh, Protestant chords, you know, Protestant hymns or Protestant chords, and that's where the the tonal thing started for me with that uh, with that sensibility. And that opening piano chord. Yeah. That whole. Yeah. yeah. So it was more about the geography actually than about two old folks. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and about the beautiful. Uh, uh, it was like a travel log, you know. Stephen Grimes, this incredible cinematographer, went out and shot all this second unit footage, and and they used a lot of it. That the other thing about that film that that uh, when people say, "What's your favorite? What was your favorite film?" I don't have one, but I do know that on Golden Pond was the film that l that allowed the most space for a score. And a lot of it due to what it looked like, you know, all of that empty space without a lot of dialogue and story going on. Now that director was Mark Rydell. Mark Rydell. Was he more aware of the power of music and therefore gave you more room, do you think? I think that, I think he was. I, Mark is a good musician, incidentally. He's a good piano player. He, he, he wanted to be a bebop piano player when he was a kid. Uh, but I think... Actually, Mark turned down my first uh, my first uh, little demo theme for that picture, uh, and he had some, I don't remember the details, but he had some very logical reason why he wanted me to try something else, and uh, uh, God bless him for that, because because this was clearly a better you know a better choice what we ended up with. Is it also true that you visited the set? Yeah. Yeah. Does that help, and do you do that often? Uh, I don't get to do it as often, but it does. It does help. It helps 
with, again, the, the geography. <laughs> The next film you did for Pollock yeah. was one, I think, of the most interesting musical risks of film in the 1990s, which is The Firm. Uh -huh. I'm fascinated to know, and, and our viewers, I guess, may or may not know, that this is a solo piano score, which I think is a huge bit of daring on everybody's part creatively. <laughs> and The Firm is a John Grisham novel turned right. into a... Thriller by yeah. Sidney Pollack. Right. Talk about how you guys came up with this idea and how it worked out. Okay. First of all, it wasn't us guys. It was Sidney. He said, he called me from this location. I think they were shooting in Memphis. He said, what do you think about a, a piano blues score for this film? And I, I hadn't seen any of the film or, or they had, I don't think I'd read the book either. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said, uh, "Always, I'm always up for piano blues score." What What are you thinking? He said, "Well, I've been going down to BB King's club every night, <laughs> listening to blues. So that's where his head was uh, during that that time." And I said, "Okay, well, let's let's see. What when are you going to have something to to show me?" He said, "Why don't you come to uh, the Caymans?" Some of the film, some of the story took place in the games. They were going down there to shoot, so he said, "Come down, uh, whatever the day was, like a month later." So I went down and I played some. I I played some blue. I figured out some blues and I played it for him. I saw the some footage, and uh, he said, "This is going to be great." He said, "Now let me show you this how this thing opens." And it was this whole montage basketball game uh, that uh, Tom Cruise was playing in Massachusetts and when he was in school, in law school. And uh, I thought, okay, well, I'll find, a pl I'll find a rhythmic thing to do there. I'll find something to do when they go to, when they go to Memphis that sounds more Southern. But then there are a lot of other places in this film that that needs scoring, that the blues isn't going to be the answer. But maybe we can do it. He said, but, but let's do it all on piano anyway. I said, okay, so that's a place to start. And every step of the way, I mean, we started recording, started making tracks uh, for this thing, and it was very, you know, very simple to know what you have or you don't have, because it's like one instrument, you can make a take and go listen to it and see what to change and what to fix. Um, and I kept thinking the whole time, I've got to record, we have to record this on multi-track machines because I know we're going to have to come back in with an orchestra and sweeten some of this. So we did the whole score with just piano uh, and they were, uh, it was on a 48-track 40, tape machine. So we had all of these empty tracks. But I was sure we were going to have to do it, and and Sidney was like a bulldog. He was he would say, "No, this is great. Um, we need some we need some percussion. Can you? Wh how are we going to do that?" And I said, "Well, we can do that inside the piano. We can make those noises in the piano." And that's how it, that's how it went. That's the that's the whole thing. It was because he wouldn't let up from this original idea that that it worked that way. Talk a little bit about, I mean, there's a famous scene in that, the Mud Island Chase, right. where I have a feeling, I don't know how many times you may have overdubbed yourself. Oh, yeah. But it's really interesting. I mean, the, the total use of the piano as a percussion instrument right. in many different ways. Yeah. Can you talk a little yeah, bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we put, this, we put this track down, this this kind of clave track that was the tempo, and then... And then uh, Are you hitting the piano? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find the, you find the play, and hitting it with a with a, a soft mallet like a like a soft marimba mallet. Find the right place, and then we found this is a, this is beginning of other technology too. We found we could we could sample this and then play it back on a keyboard that sound in in the booth, you know. So it took forever to do all these tracks together. Then there was a there were actual piano parts acoustic, you know, 
piano parts using actual notes. And then there were a lot of stuff done on the strings, on open strings. And uh, I must say, when it was all done, it felt like a real score. How do you spend most of your time now? Cleaning my room, <laughs> looking for my keys. <laughs>